I'm Mark Saxton. I'm Joey Cundiff. And as always, this is Blue, Blue Collar Motherfucking Sports Talk. I'm digging the energy. I love it. I love it. We are almost professional. Oh, it's happening. Somebody's got to sign us. But until then, we are here to talk the most. The mostest. Shit you ever heard in your life. And it's all going to be factual. 100%. Because what we say is facts. And when we disagree, it's going to be a fact. One, One way, way or, or the other. other. Yeah. Let's talk some shit, buddy. Let's do it. Well, that that intro was hot. It was. No. But you know what else is getting hot? Our sponsors. Right here. You know, you know what else is getting hot? <laughs> <laughs> hey, before we talk about the playoffs, I saw some on ESPN. No, it wasn't on ESPN. I'm sorry. Fox, Colin Cowherd show, talking about the Cowboys are still alive in the East. <clears throat> the fuck does that mean? We're still alive to win it. Why don't you put that? Not we're still alive like we're searching for a playoff spot. Get fucking better. Why do you hate the Cowboys so much? Listen, I hate the Cowboys as much as the next same person. However, I don't like it. If you're going to have an opinion, share that opinion. But don't let that be your fact. And I feel like that happens too much in sports. It really does. I hate the Cowboys, but they're very much in, in control of what they do from here on out. Not just the playoffs, what I'm talking about. It's, it could very easily be their conference to lose. We just need the Eagles to lose twice and us to win twice, and it's our conference. But don't word it in such a way to where you, to where you make it look like the Cowboys are 6-8. and eight. They did this for the longest time with Tom Brady. That's a weird Brady. number. Yeah. They did this for the longest time against Tom Brady. Or for Tom Brady. Yep. And, and now everybody hates him. Yeah, and, and I don't like it whatsoever. I hated Tom Brady because of the hype that came with him. I never, I never hated what Tom has done for the game. I've always been a Tom fan and what the media has done to his name after this. And what they've done and brought up his marriage and over and over again. Lee... What the fuck does that have to do with sports? Just absolutely destroying the man. Like, what does that have to do with sports? If it's bothering him when he's playing, I'm sure he would say it by now. But and if he, he doesn't even have to. Yeah, and, and if it is affecting his game, it's none of your damn business. And another thing that I saw today, and I agreed with Colin on this one. I agree with Colin on some things, okay? I listen more for his analogies. I'm younger. He's married like four times. I don't know. <laughs> A few times. I don't want to disrespect the man that way. <laughs> like we just been saying. It was just a joke. But what he was talking about, Tua getting concussed, um, he goes, it's up to the man to decide if he wants to play after a doctor has cleared him. Don't leave it up to the team. If the man wants to play and he knows after all this scientific research about CTE, brain development after so many concussions, why not let the man decide if he wants to? If, if that is what you want to do. There is only 32 starting quarterback jobs in the world in the NFL. Yeah. And if he wants to fight for it, let him fight for it. And I I agree. That's that's the stand I take. If you're concerned about his health, <coughs> maybe be if you have some kind of contact to it, you ask him a few questions, you make sure he's okay. But if he wasn't competent enough to make his own decisions, we wouldn't be talking about this right now. Well, here here's my thing too, folks, is on um, I'm sick and tired of this this concussion talk because he's had a lot go on with him. And if if he wants to make the decision to play, it shouldn't be, well, we got to talk to the doctor. If he's coherent enough, like you just said, I'm sick of them going after Tua. I'm sick of them going after the Dolphins. We, we don't know. The NFL already hired a neuro doctor to be on the sidelines during any, every NFL game to evaluate for concussions. They are doing everything they can. This is the one time I'm on the side of the NFL for doing and, anything. And, and, and as a matter of fact, none of us, even those sports experts, aren't knowledgeable in anything in the medical field. No. So everything that's being spoken about is strictly speculation. And Jimmy can go fuck himself in this way. He may know how to keep you breathing, but he don't know what the fuck's going on in your brain. Jimmy's a second responder. <laughs> second, there we go. He, he works on an ambulance. No one cares about those guys. He no, I'm just kidding. on an ambulance. <laughs> from what I've heard. I'm just kidding. Everybody cares about those guys. We need our paramedics. We need our EMT crews. But 
Fact of the matter is, is it's between the player and the doctor. And if both have decided it's a go, it's a go. Yep. Stop interfering with me. And let's not forget, he's still competing for a job. If you think for one second any NFL quarterback is 100% safe, you are 100% wrong. This is still a business. It is not your business. It is the owner's business. And if the owner does not find you to be the best of his roster, you are not you are not holding a job. Agreed. So that's what Tua is fighting for. His his life, his legacy as a quarterback, and everything he wants to. And the way if, he, and the way he's making money. Yeah. This is if you were told at your job, whatever you do, you cannot do it because we don't think we think you hurt yourself too bad. We're not going to let you do it. And guess what? You're not getting medical pay. You're fucked. Your contract is now void. You got what you got. How would you feel? Would you want people telling you don't go back to work? No. Let the man do what he wants to fucking do. And now if he comes back and he says, hey, this isn't for me anymore. It's been a rough go. I'm not healthy enough. Let it be his decision. And I'll support him 100%. Yep. But if he's influenced in any way, it's just not fair. No. It's not okay. That's how it works in the ambulance, you know. Yep. You can make a decision. I'm just here for your services. It's all your choice what you do. That's right. You can make your own decision. That's how it happens in the real world. Why are we acting like the NFL is something different? Great. Now, to something different. <laughs> the NFL playoffs. Heating up, folks. Heating up. It's starting to bubble. Are you going to turn off the burner? Hell no. Nah. Turn it up. Let's go. Let's because start. the AFC has a few locks now. Now. Not only do they have a few locks, but shit's going to get interesting for the last few. So, Buffalo, Kansas City, Cincy, Baltimore, and the Chargers are all locked in. Now, that being said, Buffalo and uh, Kansas City lock their divisions. Okay, those are probably going to be... One and two. One and two. Um, fighting for the fighting for the uh home field advantage there. Um Cincy still on still on the uh on the line, but I, I, I feel like Cincy's gonna take it, like I called it at the beginning of the year. That like division, we all I mean. We all did. Um listen, in the number four slot, who just won their division, or will win their division. Will. <laughs> and and next week will not matter. It'll all come down to week eighteen mm-hmm. for the division. Jacksonville. Mm. I like seeing that. Duval. I like seeing that. I really do. I'm, I'm a fan. And uh, the number fifth slot, Baltimore, going to be interesting. No Lamar. We don't know when he's going to return. He is healthy enough to come back now. I'll tell you when he returns. What you got? When this, this wallet, fills all the way up. Mm-hmm. Does he deserve it? Oh, yeah. I agree. I agree. For as much shit talk as we do, Lamar, you got to pay the man. And, and listen... We like Lamar. I wouldn't call us Lamar fans, but we're not against him. We're supporting. Right. I think we support every man that's ever tried to be in the NFL. Until it's time to go. Yep. Then we tell you it's time to go. (laughs) The Chargers finally lock in their spot last week. Um, Justin Herbert's first playoff appearance will be here. And it's most likely his first playoff appearance will be in Jacksonville. In Jacksonville, hey, Duval. Talk about a trap game, huh? I don't think it's a trap game. I could go either way. I think it's a fa- I think Jacksonville would be favored in that game. I think the Chargers will be favored. I really do. I think what the Jacksonville Jaguars have done the last half of the season earns them the spot above what the Chargers have done in the second half of the season. Now, are you ready for this? Let's hear it. Miami, Fuck holding the slot for number seven, just ever so slightly. But New England, the Jets, the Titans, and the Steelers. Now, technically, the Raiders can still make it, but let's be honest. They sat the car, and the car is being impounded, it's and over. the car will have a new owner next year. It's over. It's over. Will the car go to Indianapolis? Ooh. I mean, the Colts are notorious for sending people that just... Hey, they say, hey, you had a bad rap. We're going to give you a chance. And then their chance is coming gone. And they're like, hey, that was your fault. <laughs> I'm going I'm to make a bold prediction. The 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 commies trade away Heine and Wentz, and they bring in Carr. I don't hate that. <laughs> 
and <laughs> I don't hate that. <laughs> and then hey, Raiders fans are kind of fucked if you don't want if and Tom Brady too. He's on that. Tom Brady, his three expected places: 49ers, Jets, and Raiders. Mm. If he goes to the Raiders, he's fucked. That defense is awful. That offensive line needs an upgrade. Why do I feel like everybody who's kind of done goes to the Jets? That's what I was gonna say. It makes it makes a lot of sense because he gets to play the Patriots two times a year. Mm. Now, but he's gonna be cold. So if he goes to the Niners and they got everything better than the Jets, he'll you know at what least mean? live comfortably. Yeah, and that's his favorite team. Now, real quick before we go to the NFC, who do you think is gonna take that last slot? I think I think Miami will. I mean, New England doesn't know what they're doing with. Matt, or not Matt, sorry, Mac, the Mac attack. The party pack. The heart attack. Mac Mac Jones. Jones. Not a whole lot of energy there, folks, because it's been depressing, yeah? You know, I do have to say this. I've lost a lot of respect for Mac Jones Mm. this year. Not because of his play. Totally, I will not lose respect over a player of their play unless they're on my fantasy football team. (laughs) That's just selfish reasons. Or unless you're Baker. (laughs) <laughs> hey, easy I still don't hate the, the man I just won't defend him as hard as Jimmy will And as hard as Jimmy gets watching him Anyways, uh, I will talk about uh, Mac has turned into a dirty player He's had a lot of plays Where he looks like he's trying to hurt the other player And he did it again against Baltimore With or, uh, the Bengals Against Eli Apple There's not You cannot You can't do that you're becoming a dirty player. You can do that if you're on defense because you can get away with it. You know, hey, you're a safety. You have to hit people. Now, you're a quarterback and you're rolling up people's ankles. You keep getting personal fouls. What the fuck are you doing, Mac? And here's, and I'm not saying this to make an excuse, but I truly believe that quarterback situation and the lack of uh, result has forced Mac to play frustrated. And has forced Mac to do to do these things. Now Mac is turning into Draymond Green. Now what I will <laughs> I like that. What I will say on top of that is Mac, buddy, you, you got to figure it out, man. If you got to walk away from the pass and walk away, but do not go down this road. It's not being pretty, and you you are kind of looking like the villain now, and people are starting to root against you. And I don't like that for anybody. But if you're gonna play dirty, expect this shit. You are going to get hit. Agreed. If you keep doing this, you will be fucking hit. Agreed. Why don't you take us to the NFC? Where shit's about to shake <gasps> up because the Eagles are going to lose the number one spot to them, my fucking boys. I have a strong and bold prediction. I think the Jalen Hurts injury is worse than what the Eagles are telling us. They've been very secretive. Remember what happens when you're secretive about an injury. You're it's trying, worse. You're trying to buy time. It's worse than what you're talking about. He is still not cleared to play next week. I think something's going on. He has been moved day to day, hasn't he? No. No. The Eagles staff came out today and said there's no telling if he's going to play Sunday. We don't know yet. Ooh, I miss that. I think this injury, and it's on his throwing arm nonetheless, so it's even worse I think this injury is going to mean something. And if you're the Eagles, what do you do? Do you sit him while he's hurt and make him wait a month and then play a playoff game, which he's proven in his first playoff game, he played like dog shit. Do, what do you do? You're stuck in a bad situation. You know, I, w- I would do this. I would sit him. I would sit him and let him play in a month because, right, he's still rolling on the confidence of what he's done all year. I don't know any player that sat him now, up. I'm not, back I'm not and saying, well. yeah, I'm not saying that that's good. But what I'm saying is, you have that to lean on to build off of. I think that would hurt more than it would gain. I think I'd rather. I think you'd rather a player play hurt, not injured, hurt, than give them a month to do nothing. Ah, uh, because we know what we it just depends on how bad that injury really is, though. Like you're saying, we don't know. We don't know. And, but he's a quarterback, and in practice, we know. They wear that red jersey. They're not getting touched. So, right. who knows? Anyways, the playoff hopefuls, the Giants, mm. Washington, mm. Seattle, mm. Detroit, Mm-mm. Carolina, oh. <laughs> the Saints. And I think that's about it. And the mostest 
Lovable number 12 and company. Now, I will say this. I'll, go ahead. Go ahead. I will say this right quick. We making the fucking playoffs. Let's go, boys. All right. I'm going to take it back just a notch. The most lovable number 12. If you're a white dude with a really patchy beard, saggy pants, a long shirt, trying to sell a dime on the street. <laughs> That's the most lovable 12 he talked about. <laughs> but they are playoff hopeful. They could also be eliminated from the playoffs this weekend if the Lions win. Listen, wrong. And they lose. That's wrong. And they lose. Yeah, and they lose. That's the only key part to this, folks. We hold our own destiny. And I truly believe that because all we have to do is win out. Two things in our favor, right? We needed three big wins in December. Got them. And like Rogers said the other day, now we get to play meaningful games in January. That being said. The Vikings always, always, always suck towards the end of the year. The Lions, we don't know because this is a whole new scheme of the Lions. Now, one thing in our favor, both games are at home, and all we really need is Washington to lose one of their two next games. Now, let's not forget, Washington has the Browns and then the Cowboys. No, Washington fucked around and sat Taylor. Mm. They benched Taylor. And look what happened. That's what happened. Now, now we but, only speak facts here. The Packers are the hottest team in the mo at the moment. At the moment. In December. And if anybody disagrees, you go back and watch their games and you'll say, oh, never mind. I was wrong. Yeah. So you take that as you will. But Washington is looking very weak. Seattle is looking very weak as of late. Mm. It is all to me between Detroit and Green Bay. And Detroit... <laughs> Has a half a game over the Packers. Yes, they do, and they all. Not only that, but they have the tiebreaker. Well, yeah. As of right now. Yep. Now. Well, that was the that was the tiebreaker. Is half a game because they're the same record. Mm. You know what I mean. So I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. Well, here's the thing. The Lions have the Bears, and then obviously us, right? I called that Bears game a trap game because the Bears have an opportunity to play spoiler for a division rival. Right, but you are totally missing which division rival they hate more. No, yeah, no, they definitely hate us. That's the spoiler they're playing. But, but. That is the spoiler they are playing. On that they are day. They're giving it <laughs> on a silver platter to on the that, Lions. On that day, all they care about is getting that win and are you ruining taking, someone's day. Are you taking an early Bears win? No. I'm just saying, don't be if you surprised. Want, if you want to lay a six-pack right now on it. Oh, no. Right it's now. The Bears. It's the Bears. I wouldn't bet a penny on the Bears. So you're going to bet Lions next week during our, or later I'm on I'm not going to bet anything. No, 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 no. <laughs> you're going to pick the Lions this week? More than likely. That's the biggest bitch move I've ever seen in my life. <clears throat> Anyways, out of, those, out of those handful of teams, and let's not forget Tampa Bay has not locked up their division. They are the weakest playoff team so far. I think the Giants would take care. I think everybody would take care of them. The Packers would. Detroit would. Carolina the probably. The Packers took care of them probably, when they were a better team earlier on maybe. in the season. But Tampa Bay is going to squeak in the playoffs. And I think for my bold prediction, I'm saying Detroit wins against the wins against the Bears and Packers lose against the Vikings. Now, that doesn't mean I'm taking the Vikings because the Packers are three-point favorites. But... And That's like I said, prediction. it's at home. And let's be honest, towards the end of the year, the Vikings are not the team you want to pick. Is that a Sunday night game? No, it's a 225 game, Arizona time, right you know now. Do you know what happens during 225 with Kirk? Hmm. His balls swell up to the size of grapefruits. Yeah. And then and then and then the, the blood starts getting trapped down there, and then he starts losing oxygen, starting to cause him to do this. Sound that is on Sunday and Monday and Thursday night. <laughs> we are talking about a Sunday afternoon <clears throat> where Kirk thrives. I'm just saying, folks, Packers playoff party, in my house. It's gonna be lonely. Scheduling it now. It's gonna be lonely. It's an AZ. <laughs> <laughs> but if you want, still want to see drunk white people, go there. It's the same thing as Wisconsin almost. Go pack, go. <laughs> that was fun, huh? That Moving was. it along. Why don't you take me? To the best show on ice. Well, Detroit lost two to four, so mm -hmm. I don't really fucking so, care. They're going into the third. 
Well, they lost two to four. I'm telling you now. <laughs> we might lose five to two. We don't know yet. <laughs> <laughs> this ain't chill, my guy. <laughs> Anyways, I'll start us off with the East. You still got Boston leading it all. But don't look now. Carolina's coming. Boston has 57 points. Carolina has 52. Mm. They're heating up at the right time. Toronto Maple Leafs sitting there at 50 points. You got the Devils, 46, who dropped off quite a bit. They did. Remember, they did. They remember we off, said this. They started off hot. We and said this. That young, that's a young team. We, we said all they these overtime it. wins that they're getting, it's going to start trickling down the other way. And, you know, having a young team now, it's definitely not impossible. And, you know, mo- most of us would say it's not even improbable. However, it is a, a, a hard challenge, an uphill challenge, to take a young team to go through the grind of the season and keep that same performance. No, OV is sitting there. Let's be honest, it's OV's team. Yeah. 44 points. Pittsburgh right behind at 43, but they're going to tie it up tonight. Uh, the Rangers, 43. The Islanders, 42. And the Tampa Bay Lightning at 41. We like to see that. Yeah. But what I don't like to see is Detroit at such a fall from 41 points. You got the you got the lightning to 35. The very next slot. I don't understand. I mean, I get it. A lot of a lot of injuries. Um, it's just that we we did really we we started off really good. Now Philadelphia is at 29. I just want to bring that up. Fuck everybody below or mm-hmm. above and below. Philadelphia is sitting there low. Good. Good on you. But hanging like out see. in the basement. What you got for the Western Conference? Hey, the Golden Knights. With only one OT loss, if I if I remember correctly. Leading the charge. And, yes, one OT loss. That's huge. 49 points leading the charge. That is still not good enough in the East, huh? You know, <laughs> do you know why that's good enough in the West? Because well, Phil motherfucking Kessel. That's Peak why. male performance, ladies and gentlemen. That's right. That's if I'm not Phil is. Kessel before I die, I don't. I think he eats four chili dogs before taking the ice, no. slamming four beers and four cheeseburgers. Let's go. Uh, the the stars looking good, looking good. Um, forty eight points. The Kings. This is where I'm a little surprised. Holding that third slot, forty six points. Uh, Winnipeg, forty three points. I did expect them a little high, but not that high. Minnesota, I expected higher, 42 points. The Kraken, coming along, mm. cracking down, 40 points. Hey, your last year's champs, hanging on, 40 points. And the Battle of Alberta, so far the Oilers are winning, 40, Calgary, 39. Now, I will say this, Oilers have probably the best center in the league. With Connor McDavid. He's going to be something special. And you're sitting there middle of the conference? Are you fucking kidding me, Edmonton? You've had him for... What, five years? Four, four or five, five years, years there. Now. And you got nothing to fucking show for it besides him? I can't talk much as a Packers fan. <laughs> Come on. Come on. You're ruining the guy's career. Let's do something. Hey, Vancouver and St. Louis at 35 points. Nashville at 33 points. Arizona needs a lot of help. They need a home. 29 points, San Jose at 28 points, Anaheim at 22 points, and I love seeing the Blackhawks at the bottom with 20. Good. I love it. Good. Good. I love every second of it. Now, something everybody's going to love every second of. One one might call it a dream or a... Or a nightmare. Fantasy? Or... If you love men, you're going to love this one. Jimmy's... Fantasy nightcap men. <laughs> it's fantasy men. And now, right here, a little editing magic. <laughs> Jimmy up. will appear. One, two, three, boom. Jimmy's fantasy nightcap. Start us off. All right. We're going to recap this past week huh, with Prescott with 31 points. Best QB to pick. <laughs> uh, just so you know, folks, I- I'll admit my fumble. I did, I did recover. I didn't lose it to the defense. No, he's a piece of fucking shit. He lost it. He lost the game. It was close. He lost the fucking game. We are close. one fucking it take, it and he close. fucked it up. No, we're still on one take, technically. Hey, no, not because <laughs> of what happened beforehand. <laughs> you fumbled it twice. 
No, once. That one wasn't my fault. It was your fault. No. Was that not your semen pet? No. It was. It was Michaela's. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh. I, I thought I hit play. I didn't hit play. That was You're an doing issue. A I can't see. Um, Jimmy, I just want to. I just want the world to know this. Jimmy called him Prescott. Dak Prescott. <laughs> We've now been informed that Jimmy calls it a pecan, not a pecan. And we were all. We also had Mark. Jimmy had Mark backed into a corner, he did. admitting that Mark was equivalent to OJ Simpson, and he Shh. let that one go. I don't know how the fuck he did it, but he fumbled it. We've had so many fucking turnovers on this side of the ball, hey. and I don't know what the <laughs> fuck is going on. I haven't done one fucking thing wrong tonight. Hey, and yeah, Mark didn't that's a lie. hit play. Hey, <laughs> that's the least I could do. You're doing a double. I'm doing a double. Come on. There we go. It's double shot. Oh, night. shit. Oh, you fumbled again? Hey, that's three to one. I don't want to hear it. Here we go. One, two, three, uh, down the hatch. Yeah, Jimmy, down continue. The hatch. Jimmy. All we'll right. See. And we have Goff with 29 and Minshew, his first appearance, putting up 28 points. Probably the best QB to pick last week, just because it's only $4,900. Right. Only. Prescott, I would have definitely picked Prescott every day of the week on that. But. <laughs> For forty eight hundred dollars to put up those kind of points, that makes you get all the best receivers. You know what I mean? That's right. Then moving on to running backs, we had Barkley with twenty seven, and then we had Foreman with twenty five, and Singletary with twenty three. Then we got C D Lamb with thirty seven, Jefferson with thirty four, and Devontae Smith with thirty four. Don't feel what's going on over here. Yeah, we're just getting the lid. Do you think? <laughs> Moving on, tight ends, Hawkinson, putting up another 38 points. I'm going to say it again. Fuck you, Detroit, for letting him go. Yeah, that was pretty shocking. <laughs> was it, was it literally shocking. the very next week after he just put up 187 receiving yards? Yeah, and he's a piece of shit for being against me on my fantasy <laughs> championship. I went 11-1 and one and lost a fucking stump. He was 6-6. Six and six, He's way. a piece of shit. He's a good guy, he really but, is. but he his really fantasy is. team is a piece of shit. I've never seen anything so glorified in fantasy football in my life. Mm. He had TJ Hawkinson, and I had Jalen Hurts, the man on this fucking jersey. The man. That I may have not, may or may not have ordered from China. <laughs> <laughs> the man, not the myth, not the legend. He's not even a legend. <laughs> He's not even something that anybody in Philly is going to write home about. <laughs> He's going to be another Carson Wentz. Go ahead, Jimmy. <laughs> then we got it. Kittle with 33 and uh, Zilstra, or however you pronounce Zilstra. it. Zilstra. I will find out on ESPN later on. 25 points. Then defenses, nothing to write home on. We had the Pats 14, Texans with 11, Bills and 10. The All Ds right. were a little short this they week. Were, but you know what? They got ahead of the Texans for uh, keeping the points up, you know? That's true. That was like I, the worst I defense so wanted in the NFL to pick the every, Texans. Every he did. He did. Week. I can attest. I can attest. But I call them a fool. A royal one. No, <laughs> don't add to it. <laughs> it's not true. He said he would bet all of his earnings on the Titans beating the Texans. I don't make much. It wasn't that steep of a bet. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to my fantasy man. Mm. There it is. And the team that these two will try and face to beat me for a lot. Try and face or will face? You. Now you're the you're going to try, but it ain't going to happen. Now, these guys what is be... the bet this oh, week? This week, if one of these two beat me, I will buy him a log of Copenhagen. And him, a log of Zin. A, a log. A, a An entire population of Zimbabwe's. A whole five cans. All right? However, if neither could beat me, he will buy me a log of Copenhagen, and he will buy me a log of Zin. And so, Jimmy, just make sure it's wintergreen because uh, I like and the cowboy breath mint. I also like Zen wintergreen six millies. If you take three millies, you are that of a child <laughs> or a bitch. <laughs> so, the team, and it's out there, and they have a few days to prep, to prep for this. They got Purdy. He looks he's like, locked, no. he's brocked, and ready to purdy. Now, let's be real. He looks like Jim Harbaugh's son, and when you look up Jim Harbaugh and Brock Purdy, you are going to be so shocked at how oh. similar they look. Hey, like I said, like I said, he's locked, he's brocked, he's cocked, and he's, and he's ready purdy. to purdy. 
Moving on. So we got ETN and McKinnon as the running backs. Mm-mm. Because, like I said, you know, McKinnon became the only receiver Mahomes wants to throw to anymore. Yeah, because he said, fuck uh, Travis Kelsey. You know, McKinnon could have <laughs> saved my playoffs in our fantasy league. You know who could have saved? You know who couldn't have saved your playoffs in your fantasy league? Jalen Cooper Hurts. Cup. Jesus, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on, I finished second in our what a bold freaking statement. league too. No I don't think list. it was that bold. <laughs> <laughs> then we got Brandon Ayuk, Chark <coughs> Jr., and Tyree kills the receivers with Komet as a tight end, flex of DJ Moore and Packers defense. And there it is. I think I'm looking at this team, and I'm not licking my chops. I'm not. I'm going to be honest with you. I say I'm definitely scoring more than 140. No, I'm not licking my Just chops. Just remember, folks, he picked green and yellow. No, listen, listen. I'm not licking my chops. I'm feeling my lip because I know <laughs> I'm going to have a full can of it's not sponsored, but sponsor us, you fox. Help out a little bit. <laughs> Jimmy's going to owe us Zinn because I will beat a team that will beat him by double. Jimmy, you think you're scoring 140? I will bet on that. One can, sir. All right. That you score 140. I bet you one can of Zimbabwe's you will not. That I won't surpass 140? Mm -mm. All right. So Joey gets an extra can additional if I can't hit 140 and they beat me. Mark, are you bitch? No. Let's do that. Let's do that. Six cans on the line. A log plus one. All right. And ladies and gentlemen, now. if there wasn't some fuck ups, this wouldn't be blue collar sports. Hey. But we're one motherfucking tape. Oh, we need to have a we need to have a little a little sign, right? We gotta erase it. Zero days since the last fuck up. But <laughs> fifty nine days since one tape, and only two days since we last shit our pants. Ah, <laughs> almost made it. It's been a long show. <laughs> <laughs> but also, make sure you guys find us on Twitch. We are streaming tonight, Blue Collar Sports Talk. We're Get playing it. some... Hey, s- and by the time this episode chill? comes out, by the time this episode comes out, we'll be, we'll be, let me tell you about it, mm. on the Twitch, playing again. Always. Or by the time this uh, episode comes out, depending on uh, old, uh, what's the name? Greg? Not Greg. What's the name? Melvin. Melvin. <laughs> you might have a full beard. Greg's by then. kind of even. Yeah, Greg, Melvin. You might have a full gray beard by then. Yeah. Anyways, boys, we've talked our shit and we've spoken nothing but facts. Let's go. It's been Blue Collar Sports Talk. Thanks for joining us, folks. Have a safe. And beautiful rest of your week.